Joining us now for more on the market, Sylvia Jablonski, CEO and Chief Investment Officer at Defiant, Defiant ETFs. <laughs> where, where's, where's your, where are you based? We're a couple blocks away from you. And this is the first We're time. We're here in this lovely city of Manhattan. The, the pandemic, um, I guess, you couldn't come in during that, but I'm surprised you've never been on set before. I'm happy to come anytime. Is it like a dream? <laughs> it is like, it, it like, is a dream. like a dream come true. Like a dream come true. Do you have pleasant dreams or are there things that keep you up at night? I have very pleasant dreams. I just came back from Greece. My... No, I, I guess what I'm getting to is <laughs> higher interest rates, um, yeah. corporate I earnings. You're about markets, uh, <laughs> yeah, is there? Yeah. What, what's on your? We got a jobs number on Friday. Yeah. What, earnings season has, has passed. It wasn't too bad. What should we be concerned with as, as investors right now? Well, I think in the short term, the concern is going to be the data that comes out. You know, we, we saw earnings were pretty good. You had NVIDIA come out with stellar earnings, for example, and you saw that the market didn't move on it as much as we had hoped. And that was because of the Fed coming in and saying, you know, higher for longer. Uh oh, things are still too hot. So I think the big risk to the market is that, you know, we may have more rate hikes than we expect and that rates may stay higher for longer than we had expected them to stay. But my view on this is actually that we are in a good spot. Earnings were solid. Corporate America is holding up. The consumer remains strong. The consumer is able to spend. And I think that the soft landing will be achieved. I think we're closer to the end than the beginning, which we know on rate hikes. And that'll give us a chance to kind of get out of this two year, you know, peaceful, sleepy market and, and pr probably get some growth. What about a recession? Will, will there be a recession? Will the Fed's work not be finished until it does orchestrate something close to a recession, at least a slowdown? Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's a tough argument. If you look at 2022 and you look at tech, for example, I think there very much was a recession in tech, you know, the right. different parts I mean of the market. I mean, an economic recession. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, you know, I think that we, we are going to have soft and slower growth for a period of time, but I don't expect a massive recession to happen. The I think Atlanta that, Fed's at 5%. Yeah, but, uh, but... When's the soft growth uh, coming? But I think that, you know, again, the consumer remains strong. You have all this, mo you know, all this money sitting in money markets. Eventually Still. that reserve, yeah, if, eventually that kind of, you know, resurges back into the market. You get more liquidity, you get more opportunity in equities, and, and, you know, overall you see growth. I think, you know, if jobs remain steady and consumers remain strong and they can continue to spend... It's, it's hard to see that recession coming. You know, can the Fed orchestrate it? Absolutely. Would they? Do they feel that they need to? And is it the only way to get inflation to 2 percent? It's I think at some point we're going to have to give up probably on that exact 2 percent number. Um, you know, Fed Chair Powell is sort of hawkish enough to keep markets at bay, but he's dovish enough to say that we have to kind of wait and see the data because we are seeing softening across, you know, various inflation measures and things like this. So, you know, Friday we have a jobs number. We have core PCE. If, if these numbers are kind of going in the right direction, maybe it'll take a little longer and rates will have to stay higher for longer. But I don't see, you know, this massive Armageddon recession coming our way. Kevin Hassett scared me a little bit because he said that the Taylor rule uh, it indicates six or seven percent for, for Fed funds to get where we need to be. And that would be followed, no, I would think, by something close to uh, to a recession. And then the, the, what he went on to say, that doesn't necessarily mean we get to two percent either. And it could be akin to something we saw in the past, like in the 70s or 80s, where you get slow growth and inflation, which is, wreaks havoc. On, on stocks and bonds. It's the worst. It's the worst scenario, right? Right. That's the worst scenario. But we could also get to a point where inflation continues to go down and stabilizes. And maybe it's not at 2 percent. Maybe it's at 2.5 to 3 percent. And then, you know, at that point, do we have to keep slamming the, keep, the foot on maybe, the gas At that pedal? point, they keep ta I think Powell would say, yeah, we're going to 2, but I think he'd be happy he'd with 2.5. He'd be probably pretty but happy about it. he just couldn't say it, probably. Probably not. Election year coming and all that, too. So. Well, you never say it anyway. Like, it, it, it's like a, yeah, we like, yeah, 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 like the Treasury Secretary does. saying a weak dollar. Right. They, they can't say that because then it, it uh, creates havoc. Yeah, and it becomes uh, self fulfilling. Does two and a half become 3%? Does three become three and a half? 58 or five. So new highs on the SP, all time highs come in what year? This year, next year? Yeah, I think I think year uh, after. Yeah, I think 2030. Yeah, I think I think 2025 is when we start seeing new highs. But I think I so m more churning for another year. I think more churning, but I think it'll be like a slow, you know, slow burn to the upside. I would expect markets to finish upward this year. You know, my my target for S and P at the end of the year was 4,600. When at um, the beginning of the year? 
at the beginning of the year, I thought that we would end up between, actually, you and I spoke about it. I said 44 to awesome. 46. Wow, I didn't remember that, but I'm I mean, going to write fine. your There's name down here. Money on the sidelines, stocks are getting crushed. You have to think the Fed at some point is going to stop doing this. That bodes well for tech stocks, you know, the market generals that everyone tech stock done all, all right in the face of what's happened, tech stocks. They've done just fine, well. and they're probably going to do just fine. If you look at earnings, it's really hard to argue that, you know, right. tech is going to fall apart now. It already fell apart in 2022. I, I think, you know, I, I think AI is real. Is there hype? Sure, there's hype, but I do think it's a real investment. You know, look at Jensen. He's, his 2024 outlook has a real view on, you know, what NVIDIA is going to produce, and you kind of have the answer, right? So you're going with NVIDIA. We had going that. Uh, we, we talked out with Andrew. NVIDIA or NVIDIA? <laughs> I'm going with NVIDIA, but I'm going that's, with NVIDIA. But that's probably because that's what we've been NVIDIA. saying. That's what we've been saying <laughs> so for a long time. NVIDIA. I think, I think it's NVIDIA too, but I just oh, you did, but NVIDIA, you said NVIDIA. NVIDIA feels natural to me. Okay. You know, I'm Polish. English is my second language. Maybe that's. <laughs> that's right. oh. I want to pass. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Sylvia. Please.